forward to worshiping and praising the Lord together with you. We are God's children. We love him and we know that he loves us. He loved us long before we could even get to know that there is a God that loves us. There is a God that would give everything and anything for us. So this morning I want us just to take a moment and worship him. And just say to him, we are your children, Lord. We love you. Come on somebody else, lift your hands unto the Lord. As we worship you, yes, Jesus, we love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We honor you. We honor you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your holy name. Yes, Lord. Mm. There is no other God but you, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Yes, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and God amongst us. We beheld His glory, the glory as the of the only begotten of the Father, full of glory, full of life, full of hope, full of everything that we need. Thank you, Jesus, for leaving your mighty throne and coming down and being with humanity to worship you. We are your children. You gave us the right to be called your children when we received you as we believed in you. You gave us that authority and we honor you for that. Yes, Jesus. We are your children.
Yes, Lord, if I had 10,000 times, Lord, they wouldn't be enough to express how grateful we are, how much we worship you. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty. Oh, the whole earth is filled with your glory. Yes, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, Jesus. We bow before you, Lord. We worship you, our Father. We worship you, our Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, we love you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. I'm reminded of the time when I was a little boy and I went visiting with a friend of mine. He's, a, he's actually um, our neighbor. But not only were they our neighbors, but we were somehow related. And as we sat there, um, my aunt, who is his mom, had actually just come from how day in that at that time we were staying in, in a village and um, you know i grew up in a village i didn't know anything better and then there was the mom um we were playing outside and then we were caught in apparently it was time for lunch or something you know where i grew up we didn't know much about lunch and the likes but from where she came from, coming from Gauteng and coming to the villages, they knew the routines of lunch, breakfast and all that and all that. And when she called us in, you know, um, I could, she, she was doing her best to be welcoming to me, to acknowledge me as a child, as a son or so. But because I was not a son in that house, I still felt like a visitor. I, I, I kept myself, I behaved, so to say. And um, I remember my friend was just jumping up and down. He went to the free, the refrigerator and opened and grabbed the yogurt and ate. And then he was all over, jumping all over the sofas. I sat at one place, you know, um, I could see that the woman was doing her best to help me be at home and make me feel at home. But it looked like nothing that she did or said could actually make me feel at home because 
that was not my home. And that was because I was not born in that home. She was not my mother. His father was not my father. I had my father, I had my mom. This was not my home. My home was the next door house. So I realized that, you know, no matter how much I try, that cannot be my home. Unless and until something miraculous would happen for me to be at home there. I want us to look at the book of John chapter 1. There's a very interesting verse there, verse 12. It says, But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the right, he gave the authority, he gave the privilege to become children of God. Now, listen to the operative words there, or an operative word that I like. It says, As many as did receive, you see, my aunt received me as her son. She, she wanted me to accept that I am her son. She, she tried to give me everything that she was giving to her son and said to me, you are my son, you are my son. But I did not receive that. And until and unless I received that, I was not going to enjoy the privilege. I was not going to enjoy the authority. I was not going to enjoy the right to be called a son. Because though the offer was put on the table, I did not receive it. Now the word of God says, to as many as did receive and welcome him. Who is this? This is the, the word of God is talking about Christ. So you see, Christ has been offered. He's there, available for all of us. But it's not all of us that are enjoying the privilege, that are enjoying the right, that are enjoying the authority. Why? Because it is not all of us that have taken a step of receiving this gift that was given. As many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the right. Now, not only... You see, the first thing that he gave them, he gave us Christ. And then as we receive Christ, then he gives us the right. It's like your receiving Christ automatically activates the right, activates the privilege. It just sets you free. You see, if I had received the offer that my aunt gave, I would have been released and I would have been free to can go and open the refrigerator. I would have been free to jump up and down like any other of her children that, would, that were jumping up and down. But because I kept in my mind the knowledge that I am not her son. As long as I was bound by that knowledge that I am not her son, I was not going to enjoy the privileges of being a child in that house. Now, not only did he give them, them the right to be called his children, now it says, uh, that is to those who believe in, that is adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. So you see, I had to believe that what my aunt was, firstly I had to believe that what my aunt was saying, she meant it. If I did not believe it, and as long as I did not believe it, nothing was going to change. Now, as many as did receive him, as many as did believe in him. You see, you first believe, and that which you believe, then you receive, and you welcome, and you embrace. So, as many as did embrace him, him, then believed in him, he gave the right to be called children of God. Now, the offer is on the table. Christ is given. The right, the privilege, the authority. Now you see, the authority that my cousin brother had in his home was such that she could, he could choose who to come in and who not to come in. He could choose to do whatever. You know, this is another beautiful thing about the privilege of being a child in a household. 
which is what God was bringing across. You see, we have changed according to our own, own human standards. We have changed that which God brought forth. God did not bring forth an institution when he brought Christ. God brought forth a household. Because he's speaking about being children. He's not speaking about being church members. He's speaking about being children. You're given the right not to be a church member, but you're given the right to be a child. Now, I've got children in my house. Guess what? My children in my house, they do as they want. They, because this is their home. They don't have to behave. They are not behaving like they're in a church. They're not behaving like they're in a boarding school. They're not behaving like they are in some kind of institution. No, they know that this is their home. They can wake up whenever they want to. They can wake up and stay the whole day with their pajamas. As long as they are in the house, in their, in their, they know that this is their home. They don't have to behave, so to say. As if, you know, I am not their pastor. I am their father. That's exactly what God is saying to you. As many as did receive this gift that our father gave, being Christ, his only begotten son, he gave us the privilege, the right, the authority to be his children. So as his children, then not only are we his children, but we are the, heir, the heirs and the joint heirs with Christ. Meaning that every benefit of the kingdom, every benefit of this household of God belongs to us. Healing belongs to us. Salvation, deliverance, peace, all the good things that God has put or brought forth as a package when he brought Christ, they are all for us. As many, and as long as you, do, you did receive him, and as long as you would receive him, as long as you would welcome him and embrace him, then you have that right. Then you can continue to say, I am your child. We are your children. We love you. We love you. We worship you. You know, we don't worship you because you're instructing us, but we worship you because we are your children. We love you because you are our God. We are your children. As many as did receive him, as many as did believe in him, he gave the right to be called children of God. Now, I want to ask you this question. Have you at any time in your life ever received him as your Lord and Savior? Have you ever believed in him? Are you enjoying the privilege of being his child? If you have not as yet received him, if you know that you've, you believe, you've always believed, but you have never received that with this which you believe. The offer has been put on the table, but you never reached out and received it. I want to pray with you right now that you may receive this gift. Please close your eyes and follow me in this prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I humble myself before you and I acknowledge the gift that you gave being your only begotten son. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Please cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I open my heart to receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. I trust you alone for forgiveness of my sins. I trust you alone for eternal life. I trust you alone for a whole new life. As I surrender my mind, my body, my spirit, my soul, my everything unto you, I choose to walk a new path with you as my God, as my Savior, as my Father. Thank you, Father, for saving me. I believe that as your word says, I am saved. Because not only have I believed, but I also have received Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Amen. 
Now, if you've prayed this prayer, I want you to know that the word of God says, as far as the east is from the west, so has he removed your sins from you. And he says, you are a child of God because you believed in him and you received him. And I want to encourage you that from today onward, you should see yourself as a child of God and you should address yourself as a child of God. I encourage you to contact us or contact me, contact the Potter's House Community Church or any Christ-believing and Christ-preaching church for a journey to grow in this new relationship that you have with our Lord and our Savior Christ. God bless you. Have a blessed day and have a blessed week ahead. We meet again next week, this time, at this very space. God bless you.